Daily Trot. I'm Jason Gilbo, Jay Gilbo 11. With me is Russell Clay at Russell J. Clay. Taking a look at tonight's 15 game slate. Uh, definitely a couple top pitching options, uh, but definitely some guys you can stack against as well. Absolutely. Um, certainly a lot of moves here you can make. There's some really priced down bats tonight, um, so I'm excited. Uh, I think I think there's going to be a lot of winning combinations tonight. Yeah, as you mentioned, I think the uh, the price down bats is certainly kind of the theme here on DraftKings. Mm, for sure. Uh, Rockies and Nationals, Gio Gonzalez versus Jeff Hoffman first here. This is not one of those ones where there are price down bats. These are kind of expensive options. Um, as far as the Rockies go, I'm really only looking to use one bat, and that's Arenado, uh, 4,900. That's about it for me. Yeah. I, I was so excited when I first hopped on because I was like, Jason, Carlos Gonzalez only 3,100 on DraftKings. And then, like, he said it as I had the realization, oh, it's not in course. Right. And then it's just not a very good play. And obviously it's lefty on lefty. So I'm sure someone else in the world probably got excited at that too. And then, yeah, I it's not a great the only play. One. Yeah, that might be true. I might be the only one. Um, so Arenado, yeah, I love that play. Other than that, I think you can take the night off from the Rockies. Yeah, I think so. And I think the Nationals are obviously going to be a team to look at. And I think they're going to go, as far as the full stack goes, they might go a little bit under the the radar. Uh, but in terms of one-offs, I mean, obviously Murphy and Harper turn are going to be still fairly popular in GPPs. Yeah, I, I certainly like them quite a bit. Yeah, and I'm not really looking to dive into the Rendon or Worth um, prices. Ramos at 36, even though he's been struggling of late. Uh, I'll, I'll take a look at him. Ramos, I'm okay with Worth. I'm not. I don't care if he got a home run against the righty the other day. I don't want to deal with that crap. Oh, all right, sir. The only way he fits in for me is if it's a stack. Right. Yeah, for okay. sure. Uh, Orioles and Yankees next here. Giovanni Gallardo versus Luis Sessa. Um, Baltimore prices, some of them are decent. I mean, um, Obviously, up front, you got Hyun Su Kim at 36, Jones at 44. Those are reasonable. Outside of that, you're kind of paying up. Yeah. Um, don't don't mind the lefties as tournament tournament one offs, but probably the only the only two I'd actually take a shot on um, for righties are Machado and Trumbo, and they're super expensive. So, I, I kind of like how they're priced. It kind of makes it easier to stay away from them. Um, so I, I don't mind that here as sort of, uh, not, not a total stay away, but a limited exposure at those prices. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at them and I think because of the prices, I, I am staying away for the most part. Um, but I, I'm not going to rule them off in a GPP sense. If you want to pay down a pitching and still get those bats in, cause they, they do have tremendous upside, especially in Yankee stadium. Um, and, and what they've done to right handers this year has been certainly worth a look. And I know, I know you liked Weeders on FanDuel. What do you think of that price here? No, no, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, thought, it, I figured so, yeah. It, that's expensive. I mean, 4200 uh, for a guy who's been so broom or bust. I mean, your friendly ballpark there, if it pays off, certainly, it, you know, it, it was a right play, but I think price, price considered, I'm just staying away. Right. So, on the Yankee side, um, I mean, obviously you got Gary Sanchez who, I mean, Babe Ruth at this point. I mean, I, I don't know how else to describe him, but he's certainly a, a pay-up option at catcher, uh, and I, I don't even mind the Gardner and Ellsbury. I don't mind a Yankee stack, actually, for value. Yeah, Yankee stack, very intriguing today. I like both New York teams as sort of a weird way to, to get exposure. Um, certainly Gardner's going to have his fair, fair ownership percentage. Um, Ellsbury, I don't know if I'm in on either way. I, I just don't see the upside there with his bat this year. Um, but I think we're looking at D.D. Gregorius, Brian McCann. I'm, I'm fine with all the lefties here, and even a Starlin Castro. Yeah, and too, I mean, Castro, Gregorius are certainly intriguing GPP options. Uh, and as you mentioned, I mean, uh, Garner and Ellsbury are not, you know, big typical outfielders where you're expecting a ton of upside. But I do like the move back at home here. I, that does benefit them. Um, and obviously the matchup against Gallardo is certainly friendly as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Twins and Blue Jays, Francisco Liriano versus Pat Dean. Um, as far as the pricing in this game goes, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, although I do like some of these secondary Twins options, like a Trevor Plouffe for a Miguel Sano uh, in tournament formats. But obviously Dozier's your most consistent guy against lefties, and it shows because he's 5,300. 
Yeah, um, that's expensive, but it's certainly he's certainly proven it to be worth it throughout the year. I mean, he just keeps hitting home runs against lefties, so um, I, I like it in a, in a tournament sense. Not going to play him in cash at 53, but overall, I like the play. Um, Sano and Jorge Polanco are kind of guys that I'm looking at as secondary pieces in this offense, especially Polanco at that price. Um, love his position versatility, and obviously – um, just at 3K against, you know, a pretty inconsistent lefty, someone I'm certainly looking at. As far as the Blue Jays go, I mean, uh, you're paying up to get these bats. I mean, Donaldson and Encarnacion, both 5K. Uh, the Russell Martin price tag is certainly up there as well. Bautista and Tulowitzki are certainly reasonable options to get exposure to. Um, and we were kind of talking about the Blue Jays just being that team that, um, you know, they're constantly projected for over five, five and a half runs. Tonight they're over six for the second straight night in a row. Um, obviously, it's something against a, a mediocre lefty that you're looking to get exposure to, but on a 15 game slate, it's not like I'm diving in at 100% expo- exposure to any of these guys. Yeah, I like Batista quite a bit at four, and I can't believe I'm saying that because I don't like Batista as an actual play, but 4K, I I can't beat that. If you can't beat him, join him, or whatever they say um, about that type of stuff. So um, firing away with Batista at four, I don't care. I know he's coming off the injury and he's been struggling, but I, I like that price. Yeah, certainly a reasonable price tag. And, and Dean, I mean, 388 Woba to right. He's uh, in his career, 1.77 home runs per nine. Uh, so you can obviously like a lot of these Toronto bats. And they're definitely stack worthy if you're looking to kind of make a pay down the pitcher. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Royals and Red Sox next here. You got Steven Wright versus Ian Kennedy. Um, for me, I mean, I'm staying away from the Royals tonight. Uh, they're probably going to toss in a couple more right handers, which are obviously playable. But. Usually the guys we do look at against righties, Eric Cosmer and Gordon, um, not in play for me tonight. No, they they really kept that Gordon price up after that home run stretch, so I I can't do it at batting that late in the order. Um, and yeah, as you mentioned with Hosmer, um, I'm just not trusting Wright to be like you know, even if he is inconsistent, I'm not sure who it's going to come from in this Royals lineup. So I'm probably just fading them altogether. Yeah, I mean, you look at Wright, I mean, tough against lefties. Obviously, that takes a couple of those bats out of play. Um, and overall, I mean, Wright just doesn't have those blow games that gives you a ton of exposure. Yeah. So, uh, as far as the Red Sox go, um, you can make a case for some of these guys, I think more so on here as far as the top of the lineup goes. But Bogart's struggling. Pedroia has been a guy who, who's been hitting the ball well at 3,800. Candy is a guy who does struggle on the road, uh, but obviously pitching very well in the second half. Uh, just a GPP team for me to target. GPP, but I think with the awareness that this Red Sox team can just smash anyone, so I'm not a, I'm not against them putting up eight runs tonight. You know, it's just the, Kennedy's been pitching so well of late um, that you kind of you kind of do keep them to just tournament play. Um, obviously, you love that Ortiz um, against righties at any time. Yeah, you certainly do. And as far as guys like Jackie Bradley Jr., 4,400, they don't mind there. I think it's a reasonable price. Sandy Leone, 34 as well. Um, Outside of that, though, I mean, I'm kind of looking to to kind of diversify myself and not get a ton of exposure. Right. Uh, Angels and Tigers next year, Justin Verlander versus Ricky Nolasco. Um, For me, I I quickly kind of just wrote off the Angels off the board. I mean, obviously, Mike Trout at 5,100. Uh, I got to talk about, I just never find myself paying the price for him. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, that Cole Calhoun price keeps going down and I'm just keep not in touching it. Um, maybe if he's 2k at some point, then I'll start to dive back in, but overall, nah. And, um, with Nolasco, I mean, I think this is, uh, pretty easy. Uh, I, I look at that Kinsler price. I'm, I'm in on that quite a bit. Yeah, I really came. I mean, thirty six hundred is certainly reasonable, um, and obviously Miguel Cabrera is priced up quite a bit. But um, the guys around him, I mean, if you did want to stack a Kinsler, uh, a, a, you know, a Justin Upton around him and Ibar, if you felt like going that way, it makes those JD Martinez and, and Miguel Cabrera prices a little bit easier to kind of accommodate in a stack. Uh, and I don't even mind them as one offs. I think those are all great options there. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, one through six, one through seven, really in this lineup, I'm okay with at least in tournaments, Kinsler and cash for me. 
Yeah, I, th I think uh, Martinez, Cabrera, if you can afford them, are cashing viable for me. Uh, in the last go, 367 Woba to righty since last year, 1.63 hunts for nine. Definitely uh, worth a look. Although I will say him and uh, one other second baseman are going to be in a, a dead heat for me as far as who I'm using tonight, uh, Jason Kipnis. So we'll, we'll see who wins that battle eventually. Oh, boy. It's going to be a race to the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> Padres and Marlins next year. Jared Kosar versus David Phelps. Uh, this game is pretty unappealing for me. Uh, Yelich is always kind of a little bit overpriced for me on DraftKings. Uh, I'm pretty much just staying away from this game in general. I think Marcelo Zuna might be the only one I take a look at in GPPs at 3,700. Yeah, which is unfortunate because you kind of want to go at Kosar, but again, these Marlins without Stanton, it's just been a rough. It's been a struggle. It's been a struggle. You know, you see someone and they're. They're trying to, we're going to use a grocery store analogy. They're trying to get the right cereal. They can't find it. They're dropping boxes. They're spilling them over. You know, when you hit one and like three fall over, that's, that's, we're just watching. That's what the Marlins are doing right now. So uh, I, I don't know. I'm not really buying them as a high upside team tonight. No, and, and you look at D Gordon um, because you've already mentioned two third basemen who are, or two second basemen who are cheaper. It, there's no yeah. reason for me to use him. So. I, I think, yeah, by process of elimination, he's kind of out over those two with price considered. Yeah, I definitely think so, too. Uh, Phillies and Mets next here, Adam Morgan versus Bartolo Colon. Um, as far as some of these guys go, I mean, Wilmer Flores is still the one I like to use quite a bit here. Um, certainly my favorite Mets option, just price considered. But obviously, I think Yoan Cespedes is at 49. It's a, a nice target mm. as well. Yep. Um, uh, Mets are in play for stacking tonight. I'm in. Uh, I, certainly that front four as well. So Neil Walker, um, I, I'm in on this stack. Not not in, in a cash type of way, but I mean, certainly Wilmer Flores has been hitting well. You like that quite a bit. Even a Jose Reyes at the top of the order. So I'm not worried about Morgan sort of holding these guys down. So weak enough matchup to where I'm in on the Mets. Yeah, definitely am too. And, and obviously Adam Morgan, I mean, as you mentioned, such a delightful matchup when you see his name on the on yeah. the sheet. It's just one you just look to target against. Even the Mets team gets put into play more here. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the Phillies go, uh, I'm not really looking to use anyone here. Um, outside of maybe uh, Michael Franco or Duba Herrera, that's about it for me. Yep, normal, normal Philly slate where we like those two and everyone else is kind of like, you know what, yeah. Eh, yeah. Eh. No thanks. Yeah. That that sounds about right for the Phillies. Yeah. Uh, Indians and Rangers next in Texas. Uh, overall, you got Martin Perez and Corey Kluber going. Not really looking to pick on Kluber on a 15 game slate. I think that one's an easy fade. Yeah, pretty easy to fade that. Um, not really into targeting Kluber on any slate. Pretty much with any offense. So um, unless he was playing the Indians, I mean, then I might think about it. But no, beyond that. Not really. No, and with Martin Perez on the other side, um, I mean, a couple bats here I don't mind are Erlen Dor, Mike Napoli uh, are certainly in play. Brandon Geyer, I don't mind for a value outfield option. Yeah, but against lefties again, we've seen this team be pretty limited. Um, so obviously not, not something you're looking at. I don't mind them. I mean, I don't mind the right-handed bats. I think they're a little bit more in play for me here. Um, as far as using the guys up up at the top of the lineup, like Rajai Davis, who I feel like he's a little bit overpriced, um, I think I'm just kind of sticking with more tournaments. Yeah, well, I guess in t against weak lefties, they're sort of in play. Obviously, the Napoli's of the world, but it's just kind of been a struggle every once in a while. Obviously, we saw what Hamels did last night. So, yeah, just be cautious. Don't get too crazy with the Indians' exposure here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, next one here at the Rays and Astros, and this one, uh, the Astros came at me as, as a little bit of a surprise as far as pricing goes. It doesn't make it quite, it makes you think a little bit, I guess. Uh, Springer, Altuve, both 4,400. Both those guys I actually do trust against lefties. Um, you, you can look at Bregman, you can look at Correa as well, even at Gattis. I think the Astros are probably more team I might get exposure to here on, on DraftKings because of the prices. And again, yeah, normally, I mean, if they were priced up normally, I'd look at uh, Smiley and say no thanks. But I, I'm, I'm thinking about it like it, you described it perfectly. Like I, I have to think about it at these prices. So I'm certainly going to get um, some Springer, Altuve, and Correa shares, especially Correa at 34. That's that's a nice price. 
And this is a game where I am going to use a little bit of Smiley as a pitcher as well. Um, mm. Because obviously Houston does have a high strikeout rate. I mean, there's still some home run potential. I don't like the ballpark Smiley's pitching in. Um, but with that being said, I, I do think Smiley has a decent chance of actually pitching well. So it's going to be one of those ones where I do kind of hedge a little bit and try and get some exposure as far as a group of GPP lineups. Yep, definitely. Uh, as far as the Rays go, um, Mike Fires is a guy who's a viable GPP option, and, and the Rays' offense is basically just limited to basically the first four at this point. Now, uh, Brad Miller I'm okay with, and, and with Fires being a little bit weaker against righties, four sideline Gory are certainly in play for me as well. Yeah, um, I like I like Miller quite a bit at 45. I think that's that's a nice um, alternative to maybe a Correa or or some other shortstop option. So it's not cheap, um, but we know Miller against against righties um, probably going to have some decent ownership. So I, I don't know I don't know how much exposure I'm going to get to him, but you always want to get a few shares. Yeah, I'll be definitely looking to get a few shares with his power. It's always nice with his upside out of the shortstop position. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mariners and White Sox here, Chris Sale versus Felix Hernandez. This is certainly one I'm not jumping all in on. The uh, only bat I'm looking to use is Nelson Cruz at 42 in a GPP. Um, nice, because he's facing a lefty still. Obviously, Sale's, you know, uh, still an, uh, an above average to elite arm, uh, but hasn't been that dominant guy that really keeps you away from anyone going against him. No, certainly hasn't. And even the strikeout rate hasn't hasn't really been all that intimidating for him this year. So, um, yeah, cruising a tournament I'm okay with. As far as the White Sox go, I just don't see anyone that's a good enough hitter with how Fernandez is, or Hernandez is pitching to, like, be in on. You guys all know I love Justin Morneau, but I, I, we can't do it tonight, I don't think. No, the bully's taking the day off. He's calling out of school yeah. sick today. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> bigger fish in the pond today. <laughs> yeah, o- overall, that game's not not an appealing one for hitters. Pirates and Brewers next here, Ryan Vogelsung versus Matt Garza. Uh, the prices here are a little bit out of control um, as far as guys like McCutcheon, Marte, and Polanco. Not quite sure how much exposure I'm going to get for the price. Um, but I do like Josh Bell still. I, I have always liked him more here on DK at outfield because, one, it gives you still – you can still roster another two that uh, that are kind of your favorites where on FanDuel first base is just one spot. It kind of is a little disappointing. Yep, and with Gregory Polanco, I mean, at 55, if you fade him, even if he hits a homer, I feel like it's not totally killing you to fade him with, with how much you can spread that salary around elsewhere. So um, certainly in a good matchup, but I'm, I'm not afraid to fade him either at that price. No, I, and, and that's the thing. I mean, you can go with them. You can go with the Pirate stack. It's certainly a viable option if you're making multiple lineups. But, yeah, I, I'm not afraid of, of fading this game in general. Yep. And although I do like it, I mean, obviously two weak right-handers. Um, it's a viable game to target, but with these offenses that are so, so boomer bust, I'm okay with not taking that chance. And I can finally fade Josh Harrison because he's the same price as Kipnis and Kinsler, so see you later there, pal. I'm sure you're very enthused. <laughs> it, it was it hurt the past few days, but I had to throw I gave him two chances, and uh, he did not redeem himself, let's just say. No, uh, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as far as the Brewers go, I mean, Jonathan Villar, intriguing GPP shortstop option. Uh, obviously, Vogel swung 387 well with the left. He's 1.99 homes per nine. He's always struggled against left-handed bats and, and has always struggled in you know good hitting parks. And I think this kind of sets up for him to, to, to struggle. But uh, obviously, this lineup is certainly not the most friendly or trustworthy outside of really broad Villar, you know, Chris Carter, and even a Gannett. Yeah, and and their prices aren't really loosening up for us, so I don't I don't mind a Braun. I I think he's a nice sort of tournament play, but overall, I'm not I'm not buying this too much here. No, I'm not either. I mean, just a little pricey for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, A's and, and Cardinals next here. Ross Detweiler versus Luke Weaver. Um, as far as the A's bats go, uh, the one guy I did like in the outfield is Chris Davis. That's a little pricey for me, so I'm just gonna kind of kick it with Stephen Vogt at 3,400. Yep, I think that's the way to play it. I, this again, I I, I sit on Fanduel too. I, this kind of stinks to me. I, I don't understand with Luke Weaver. I don't understand why the Cardinals are are two o two favorites here. Um, I I think there is some potential for this Ace offense tonight, but it's tough to tell who. And Chris Davis, obviously five K. That's that's a little egregious there. So Vot, let's just kick it with Vot. Simple, um, straightforward. I'm cool with that. 
Yeah, I think so. And we'll shift over to the Cardinal side here. Um, Tommy Pham, 3900 decent value. Uh, Piscotti he's obviously priced up like a top tier outfielder. I mean, if you want to go that way, sure. I'm not making him a priority here on DraftKings. Uh, where FanDuel, it was a little bit easier to kind of deploy. I think once you kind of get over the 5K mark, I start to kind of look for other outfielding bats. I mean, that can kind of reach the similar uh, outcome come the end of the night. Yeah, I agree. Um, tough to really get behind this Cardinals offense at these prices, but overall, I mean, um, I'm okay with Piscotti for sure. Yeah, definitely. If Jed Jerko comes up into the middle or top half of the lineup, I'm, mm. I'm okay with him at 4,300. Um, I, but I'd be obviously looking to use him at third base uh, because obviously those two second baseman options are going to be kind of where you kind of land and use a ton up tonight. Yeah, and, and Yadier Molina worth a mention, but not worth a big mention. Worth, yeah. Or, worth Yadier a punt Molina. mention. Okay. Worth a punt mention. Yeah. Sure, I can get behind <laughs> that. <laughs> Uh, Dimebacks yeah. and Reds next here. Braden Shipley versus Brandon Finnegan. Reds prices are priced up more here on DraftKings, but I do actually like them still. Obviously, it's not really a stacking situation because there's basically only three bats you can use. Um, but obviously, going up against Shipley, I think Vado, Duvall, and Hamilton are all certainly in play. Yep, certainly Vado. Even at 55, I think that's that's one where you certainly want to get some shares uh, just in case. Uh, yeah, Duvall, obviously the power against righties, so that's a pretty solid matchup for him. And then Hamilton, I mean, you never know when he's going to, you know, just steal two or three bases in the night. So obviously like that upside as well. That's an interesting three-person stack for sure. Yeah, it definitely is. And on the Dimeback side, I mean, thank God they actually have A.J. Pollock in the lineup and, and at a really reasonable price, too, at 3300 Pollock's a guy who I, his track record against lefties has been phenomenal in his career. Uh, he was hitting well down the minors when he was rehabbing, so I'm really okay with jumping back in, and even in the first game back. Yeah, um, that's exciting, 3,300. So uh, you mentioned he's probably going to be chalky. probably will be, uh, but I think you fire away with it at 3,300 against Finnegan. I mean, that's pretty easy, and he makes that that gold shit ice in the stack sort of easier to swallow. Yeah, it definitely could. I mean, um, it, it, it kind of shakes out. I mean, you, you want to see if Weeks and Tomas are in the lineup, but obviously those two would certainly be in play. Mm. And Castillo against the lefty is always um, okay with paying up for him uh, as far as behind the dish. Yep, so certainly a lot of options and versatility in this lineup. And, I mean, stacking, standalone, fit them in where you can. I think it's all all in play. Um, it's the works for, for the Diamondbacks tonight. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, Cubs and Dodgers next year. Bud Norris versus Mike Montgomery. Um, Cubs bats are pretty priced up, as they usually are. Against Bud Norris, I, I do like him as far as the one-offs go. Um 386 Wobo allowed to lefties since 2015, 1.78 home runs per nine for Norris. So obviously that puts a lot of guys like Rizzo, Fowler, uh, Zobrist in play. But Zobrist, I think because second base eligible, that's where it just kind of drops off whenever you start to look at second base and go, oh, I can get Kinsler, I can get Kipnis for that cheap. I might yep. as well just go that way. Yep, and uh, it's kind of unfortunate. I don't mind the play, um, but I think it's easier to sort of just go to Rizzo or Fowler for tonight. Yeah, I think so, and it, it pains me to do this, but GPPs, Jason Hayward is a salary relief at 2900 if you can kind of bank <laughs> on him. But he has already hit this this uh, month alone, so he we might have to wait till, till, till uh, September. Yeah. <laughs> I know it pained you to say that too, so I, I give you some credit for mentioning that. Yeah, I do like him as, as a tournament guy tonight for sure. Yeah. As far as the Dodgers go, I mean, they're horrendous against lefties. I mean, we saw that last night, but they've been all year, bottom five in Woba. There's a reason for that. I mean, the right-handed bats don't even hit lefties well, and they're a heavy lefty team. Yes, Manny Grandal is the only one I'll take a look at um, in GPPs. Yep, 41. Um, I'll, I'm okay with that. Howie Kendrick, a little out of my price range at 45, so I think it's just easier to cross them off tonight. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, Braves and Giants next here. Jeff Samarja for Joel De La Cruz. What the hell is going on with, with Angel Pagan and Denard Span? Dude, I'm telling you, man, Denard Span, lo they love pricing him up. Yeah, I, I don't get it. I, I mean, he's had a couple of decent starts, but... <laughs> I, I'm genuinely <laughs> mad about this. <laughs> I, right? Because at, at 3,500, we're looking at him as a potential like cash guy. But if 
five k, I, I just yeah, I can't, I can't do that, no, man. Me either. I can't do it. Yeah, but Buster Posey so. at three eight, I'm fine with. Brandon Crawford at four three, I'm okay with. Um, mm-hmm. Even a Brandon Belt at thirty six, I'm okay with. But I think outside of Posey, I think the the rest are just kind of GPP plays. Belt Belt was kind of the guy I was zoning in on on my first run through the lineup. Um, I really like that play. Hopefully, he bumps up from the seven, like to the to the fifth or sixth spot tonight. We'll see. Um, I'm okay with the Crawford as well at 43, but uh, Belt's the guy I'm kind of zoning in on there. Yeah, definitely. And with the Pence injury, I think he should bump up into the a more RBI productive spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as the Braves go, I mean, the lefties do have a decent matchup against Samarja, who has been bad against lefties. But uh, I still like other guys in other price ranges right around them. In Coyote, in this ballpark, Marcakis in this ballpark, not really a ton of upside there for me. Yeah, um, tough tough to get, you know, Braves exposure tonight. I, I, know, I know it pained you when I said anything good about Jeff Samarja, but I think... I think I might consider him in tournaments tonight. I think if Freeman's out of that lineup, it makes it a little bit easier to stomach. I'll give you that. Yeah, okay. That's fair. If Freeman's in, um, I can understand your disgust and distaste. Outside of that, <laughs> though, I would just go pick up like a couple packs of cigarettes and just probably just through, <laughs> through the amount of innings, you're just going to have to just be like, oh, God, you just got to get in. It's yeah. going to be stressful. It's never an easy one. Yeah, but I lost all my I lost all my cigarettes in the dice game. Remember? That's right. Yeah. So you, you, so gonna... so you, you got to go. I mean, you you do have the one o'clock poker game <laughs> coming up soon. So I gotta you, you gotta win it back. You gotta win yeah. some back for the Sparja start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna wrap things up with the DraftKings Daily Trot. Be sure to check out DaveFantasyCafe.com for all great tools and content.